Plato and Dionysius the Tyrant From Dialogues of the Dead Dialogue 21 by Francois Fenelon This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org the solid happiness and safety of a prince is placed in the love of his subjects dionysius a good morning to you plato you are still the same man as when i saw you in sicily plato for your part you are far from being the same you don't shine here as you did upon the throne there dionysius you were a chimerical philosopher your republic was nothing but a mere dream plato nor has your tyrannical government proved more solid that's fallen too you see dionysius twas your friend dion that betrayed me plato you betrayed yourself when we make ourselves hateful we have reason to apprehend everything dionysius tis too toilsome to make oneself beloved we must take care to please other men had not one better please oneself and run the risk of being hated plato when a man to gratify his passions makes himself hateful he has as many enemies as he has subjects and consequently can never be in safety confess the truth did you sleep in peace Dionysius. I own I did not, but the reason of that was I had not put enough people to death. Plato. And don't you see that the death of one drew the hatred of others upon you? Those who saw their neighbors fall a sacrifice expected every day to meet their fate, nor was there any means of saving themselves left but putting you to death by way of prevention you must either kill every one of your subjects or else be merciful and endeavor to be beloved when your people love you you no longer stand in need of guards but in the midst of them are like a father in the midst of his children dionysius i remember that you urged all these reasons to me when i was about to lay down my tyranny and become a disciple of thine but a flatterer hindered me and indeed tis a hard task to renounce all sovereign power plato had it not been much better to have renounced it of your own accord and have become a philosopher than to have shamefully been driven from the throne and obliged to get a living at corinth by keeping a school dionysius but i never thought that i should have been driven from it plato how could you presume that the power would be long left in your hands at a place where for their own safety they were obliged to work your destruction dionysius i was in hopes that they would not dare attack me plato when men hazard less by attacking you than by letting you live there is a now who dare to do it your own guards in such a case have no other way of saving their lives but by sacrificing yours but confess the truth now did you not live more happily whilst poor and at corinth than you did in all your splendor at Syracusa? dionysius you are in the right aunt the schoolmaster at corinth could eat and drink pretty well but the tyrant at Syracusa was always fearful and jealous, perpetually desirous of cutting somebody's throat, extorting money, or making new conquests. Pleasures were no longer such to me. I had lost the relish of them, and yet greedily coveted them. But you, who are a philosopher, tell me, was your condition unhappy when I sold you into bondage? Plato in my bondage i enjoyed the same repose which you did at corinth with this difference however that i had the satisfaction of suffering for the sake of virtue through the injustice of a tyrant and you were a tyrant shamefully dispossessed of your power dionysius 
Well, I see that I get nothing by talking to you. If ever I return again upon earth, I'll either choose a private station, or I'll make myself be beloved by the people who are in subjection under me. End of Plato and Dionysius the Tyrant From Dialogues of the Dead Dialogue 21 by Francois Fenelon 1651 to 1715